Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Amanul Sand. I facilitate virtual programs at Feature Development Webinars. Feature Development Webinars is a social action project implemented by British Council Active Citizens in Pakistan. It is an initiative to support teachers and educators around the world with professional development opportunities. We are thankful to Master English Training for sponsoring a Zoom account. And in this webinar, turning strategies into habits will present strategies to get students to take charge of their own learning. We'll provide four techniques, one for the each of four skills, listening, speaking, vocabulary, reading, to help learners turn their strategies into habits. And now it's my privilege to introduce Nick for this webinar. Nick has been active in English language teaching for many years as a teacher, examiner, presenter, and teacher trainer. He has traveled and given seminars and workshops in many countries all over the world. He has written extensively on methodology, though he is better known for his psychology and ELP articles in which he draws on insights from such disciplines as marketing, management, and social psychology, and which have appeared in numerous newsletters and magazines. His areas of interest include student motivation, learner independence, teaching one-to-one, -one, and humor. Thanks very much for your time, Nick. We are pleased to have you at Theater Development. Thank you webinar. for the invitation. So okay. I'll stop, share, mm -hmm. stop sharing my screen and take it away. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the introduction, Amanullah. Okay, let's see now where we are. Okay. Let's start sharing. All right, so hello everyone. Uh, Amarullah, please, please tell me you can see the first screen of the slides, right? Yes, I do. Okay, okay, let's hear that. All right, so hello everyone. Um, my name is Nick and thank you all for being here today. Now, let me just give you the basic idea of this talk. Here it is. Hopefully, yes. Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. Let me tell you a little story about this one. A few years ago, I had a student. Uh, his name was Spiros. He was a very nice kid. He was 14 years old. Uh, his level was intermediate. And uh, he was a, a very nice fellow, but uh, not a particularly active student, if you know what I mean. He, he didn't like doing homework so much and so on. His level was good though. And anyway, so I tried this and I tried that. He had to take the IELDS exam, so his level had to improve. And at some point, I realized that he had a very good sense of humor. So I thought, okay, here's something I can use. So the next time in the lesson, I played a comedy clip, okay, a, a video from a BBC um, television comedy, and he loved it. He absolutely loved it. So the next time I played another one, and then another. And then I thought to myself, hang on, why should we do this during the lesson? So what I did is I showed Spirus my YouTube channel, Comedy for ELT. So there are about 200 clips there. So Spiros would go there. He would watch the clips he enjoyed. Okay, he would do the exercises, the exercise there, and he would read the script so you could understand everything. And it was amazing. He loved it. And his English improved by leaps and bounds, of course. Okay, he would do that every day, one or two of these every day. And when the time came for his exam, he sailed through the exam. Fantastic. So for Spiros, this strategy worked, okay, uh, watching comedy clips. But what made the difference was that he had turned it into a habit. He would do that every day. So this is the basic idea here. If we can find one thing that our students like doing, and they can do it every day, they turn it into a habit. We've won. So let's have a look at what we're going to look at today. We want to look at four strategies 
that our students can use on their own to improve their English. And more importantly, we want to see how we can turn these strategies into habits, okay? So our students can do these regularly. And these are the things we're gonna look at. Okay. So let's start then. Why habits? What is the advantage of habits? Now, I'm sure most of you have heard of the writer Stephen King. Well, Stephen King wakes up every day. He wakes up at 8 o'clock. He sits down and writes 2,000 words every day. He's been doing this for 30 years. And he finds it very easy. He finds it as easy as you find brushing your teeth. Why? Because it's, for him, it's a habit. Let's watch this little video. After Stephen King wakes up in the morning, he knows that he'll be sitting down at his desk at 8 a.m. and writing 2,000 words. It's something he's been doing every day for the last 30 years. An aspiring author might hear this fact and put off their dream of being a great novelist like Stephen King because they know they don't have the drive or the discipline to sit down every day and pump out 2,000 words. But what the aspiring author fails to realize is that Stephen King uses as much willpower to start writing 2,000 words a day as they require to brush their teeth in the morning. Like most effective people, Stephen King turned a vital productive behavior into a daily habit that is effortless to execute. So this is the big advantage of habits. The great thing about habits is that they're effortless. You don't have to think about things, okay? They just happen automatically. So let's have a look at the habit cycle. What has research shown about habits? First of all, we know that habits are everywhere. According to researchers, 40 to 50% of everything you do every day is a habit. You do it on autopilot. Wouldn't it be great if we could get our students to study on autopilot. By the way, I have to say at this point that none of these things that I say are my own ideas. They come from these books, which I'm going to show you later. The Power of Habit, if you can see it, and Tiny Habits, and Think Small. I'll show you a picture later. And Atomic Habits. So these books tell us that habits are everywhere. This is what the habit cycle uh, looks like. It consists of three parts. There is a cue, the routine, and the reward. So think about a simple habit, like I brush my teeth okay, every day. I have lunch, I have a cup of coffee, and then I brush my teeth. The cue is the trigger, what triggers the action. And for me, is the just having had coffee. This is what makes me want to brush my teeth. The routine is what I do. And the reward for me is the feeling of freshness I get in my mouth afterwards. Okay. So we want to use this idea and get our students to, to develop habits along learning strategies. Now, let's think about learner strategies. And here I would like contribution from you. I want you to give advice to learners, all right? Think, imagine you have a learner and they're about 15 years old, let's say. What would you advise them to do to improve their English? Let me give you two examples. Somebody might say, okay, you should read graded readers like these. Somebody might say, okay, you should use vocabulary cards to study words, to learn words, okay? What about you? What would you recommend? I want you to use your mobile phone now. Use your mobile phone. Go to menti.com and enter this number, 33847619. Okay, please go to menti.com now. 
and enter this number. Amanullah, you may uh, type this into the chat. Three three eight four seven one nine. And I want you to write one sentence. What would you advise learners okay, to do in order to make progress on their own? That's the good. participants go to mentimeter.com and type this code 33 at 4719. Yes. Let me find it here. It's okay. I can see my. Here it is. All right. Somebody said, watch videos or topic that interests you. Anything else? Finish your work on time. Okay. Watch cartoons. Very good. Teaching. That's great. If we can get students to teach, that'd be fantastic. Practice, learn your words. Do it timely. Think about strategies. What can they do every day? Maintain focus. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But we want something more. Concrete. Imagine I'm a learner. I want to, to study and practice on my own. What can I do? Should practice with something constantly, with the reading, yeah? Prioritize. Yes, this is good. But what should I do to improve my English? Listening and reading books. Very good. Read books and journals. Yes. Anything else? Let's scroll down. Practice regularly. Okay, can we make it more specific? Record new words. That's very good. Keep on exploring. All right. Anything else? Feel free to contribute more than once if you want to. Okay. Use vocabulary apps. Watch movies with subtitles. That's what I mean. Something specific. Keep a record of your writing. Very good. And go back to it and check. Excellent. Excellent. So this is what I have in mind. Okay. Now, let's go back here and let me share with you my first strategy. Here it is. Hello. What is hello? Um, hello stands for English Listening Lessons Library Online. And it's a site. You go there. There are hundreds and hundreds of clips, audio clips, video clips. And each clip is accompanied by an exercise, multiple choice questions. Okay, there is the script. Okay, so you can check your answers and, and usually a vocabulary exercise as well. So what do I tell my students to do? Here's what I tell them to do. Go to hello. Choose the right level for you and the topic. Read the questions first. Before you do the listening, read the multiple choice questions. Listen to the track and answer the questions and then check okay, to see how many you got right. And then look at the script. Read the script. Is there anything I should keep? Note down vocabulary, any phrases you need to remember. Okay. That's it. The key here is for students to set a goal. So if there are five multiple choice questions, they want to set themselves a goal. Okay, before I start, I want to get three out of five. Okay. Let me, uh, let me show you how this is done, hopefully. Okay. Let's go to LO. Okay. This is what you see. LO, English Listening Lesson Library Online. All right. You click here. This is what it looks like. Imagine I'm a student. I click where it says levels. Yes, I skip the ad. That's it. By the way, it's a free site. All the tools and sites that I'm going to talk about are free. Uh, that's because I live in Greece. And in Greece, we love things when they are free. 
because we don't have any money. Okay. So look at now. Let's say that my level is level four. Click here. And here you can see the various clips that I can listen to. There are lots and lots and lots of them. Notice something else. Notice the flags. So here we have two speakers talking to each other. And these show the accents. So there is an English person and a Scottish person. So they have native speaker accent and non-native speaker accent. It's very good. So let's click on this one. The right age. When should kids get phones? So let me show you what the lesson looks like. Here you have the quiz. Five multiple choice questions. This is the track. You can see the tracks are very short. Between one and three minutes. And when students have done this, then they can look at the script and read the dialogue to make sure they haven't missed anything. Let, let's just see how it works. Okay, let's try and guess some of the answers. So they're talking, there are two ladies and they're talking about the right age for a kid to have a phone. So one of them says a six year old daughter, um, I think does not have a phone, perhaps six years old, too young. Amy got a phone when she was, uh, let's say, 17. Okay, let's guess the other answers. Katie got a phone at, I don't know, 12. They play the game called, uh, I don't know, Snake. And they said the games were educational. Let's listen to the beginning and see if we got this one right. Um, so I want to ask you about when is the right age to have stuff or to start doing stuff? What do you think is the right age to start having a phone? Oh, I think for security reasons, to keep the code safe, perhaps maybe about four years old, when you start hearing around these cases about the abuse and um, the videos that people show of people having sex with their phone. Um, even now, my daughter's only six, so she doesn't have a phone. She's had far too much. Okay, let's stop it there. My daughter's only six. She doesn't have a phone. So I think we've got this one right. So students listen to the track, they answer the questions, and then they can get feedback immediately. This is very important. They click here where it says check answers. Ah, not bad. We got four out of five. And they can see the correct answers immediately. Very good. How long would it take students to do this? Well, three minutes. And if, even if they listen to it a second time, six minutes and then they can go to the script and read the dialogue and keep expressions perhaps like this stresses me out purely for security reasons etc very good okay so let's go back so this is a logo this is one strategy for students to uh, improve the listening skills can they do it yes can they do it on their own? Yes. How long would it take? Less than 10 minutes. Let's move on now and have another look at the habit cycle. We said that this habit cycle consists of three things. Okay, there's the cue, the trigger, and we have the routine and we have the reward. Why are cues important? The cue is what triggers the behavior. Remember, habits are automatic. Something happens in your day and you perform your habit. You have coffee up, oh, I have to brush my teeth. Cues are important because you link your strategy to something that happens to you any day, uh, every day. Okay? And then you don't have to remember to do it. Okay? So for example, let me give you an example. I like playing chess and every day uh, I, I come into this room, I switch on my computer and I solve three chess puzzles. Why? Because it's a habit with me and the cue is switching on the, the computer. As soon as I switch it on, I just do it automatically. So I, I keep practicing chess, take me two minutes. 
Now, what about rewards? Do we really need rewards? Rewards are very important when you're trying to establish a habit. Think about a dog and a dog trainer. The dog trainer tells the dog, sit, sit. When the dog sits down, uh, okay, the, the trainer gives it a little treat, some food. So the dog comes to associate the habit, you know, the action with something good. All right. But notice that later, once the training is complete, once the habit is established, you don't need a reward. When you, when you tell your dog to sit, you don't give it any food. It just does it. It's the same with habits. We need the rewards at the beginning. Think about a mother, a mother who is trying to get her kids to brush their teeth. All right. So say, if you brush your teeth, uh, I'm going to let you play a video game for 10 minutes. That's the reward. But later, once the kid gets used to brushing its teeth, it won't need that. So what kind of rewards should we choose? Well, it has to be a little thing. You tell your students, okay, have it. Read two pages from your reader and then have a little piece of chocolate. You like chocolate. Or, or play a video game. All right? It's incredible how helpful this is. I, for example, what I do is I exercise in the late afternoon. And, and I have to exercise here now with COVID. I don't go to the gym. Yeah. And it used, I, I mean, it's, if you think about it, it's a bit boring exercising on your own. I, I, I used to feel bored sometimes, but then I had an idea. I divide my exercise session into sets of exercises. As soon as I've completed one set, I play a game of online chess for two minutes. And then I do another set and play another game, which I like. This is my reward. Okay. And now I look forward to exercising, okay? Because I look forward to playing chess. So it really works. Let's move on now. Strategy number two, we want our students to practice vocabulary, okay? And it's a good thing if the vocabulary they study, it all has to do with the same topic. Here's what I tell my students to do. Okay, this is a very good site, Learn English Feel Good. So I tell my students, go to Learn English Feel Good, click on vocabulary training here. Yeah, we're going to look at this in a minute. Choose a topic. There are little, very, very short tests, okay, on different topics. So choose one of these. Do the activity. And then check your answers to get feedback immediately, just as is the case with hello, right? And this is the, okay, and then they note down useful phrases, hopefully. The key is feedback. It's not enough for students to do something. They have to know if they have done well. And these sites provide them with instant feedback. So let me show you how this works. Okay, here, learn English feel good. Okay, you click here and you get to this way. So you click on vocabulary training. Look at how many tests there are. Look, all of these, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of exercises. And each of these is very, very short. So let's try one of these together. Talking about work. Let's click here. All right. Scroll down. There are always 10 sentences, 10 questions. Now, I don't want you looking at these words. Okay. So now they've disappeared. Let's try to do the first sentences together. Is everyone here? Uh, not yet. Sarah is what? She's a little late. Oh. She's a little late. We don't need any word, but there is a word. Have a look at the. Okay. 
Now, what about this one? Did you review all the reports? Yep, I have mm, all of them. Now we need a phrasal verb here. Okay. What about this one? This is an easy one now. If it weren't for the bad, mm, it would only take me 20 minutes to drive to work. Okay, that's an easy one, isn't it? Right, okay, clearly. What about number four? Now that's not easy. It's hard to get work done when the boss is constantly mm, down my neck. That's a difficult one now. Let's have a look at the words. Here they are. Top, okay. Is everyone here? Not yet. Sarah is running. Running a little late. Did you review all the reports? Yep. I have gone through all of them. Phrasal verb here. I always tell students, focus on phrasal verbs. If it weren't for the bad traffic, that's an easy one. It's hard to get work done when the boss is constantly breathing down my neck. Oh, that's good. Okay. And when the students have done all of them, they can click on check. And the site tells you you got four out of 10. Well done. Okay, well, we didn't do all of them. And they can see, they can get feedback. Show solution. Okay, okay, yes. Show solution, they get all the solutions. And then I tell them, this is not enough. You need to look at the sentences and ask yourself, which of these phrases would I not have used? Traffic, that's an easy one. To go through the reports, that's a good one. So you're going to write this down, not as a single word, as a phrase, go through the report. And what about this one? Uh, at work, the boss is constantly breathing down my neck. I, I, I cannot do anything else, yeah? It, I'm under pressure, etc. Very good. So this is a good strategy. How long would it take students to do this? Less than 10 minutes. It would take them like three or four minutes to do this. And then perhaps if they want to make some notes, another two or three minutes. Now, I keep stressing the time, why there is a reason for this. Here is the reason. If we want our students to establish a habit, we have to start small. So this is the next thing then, the routine. All the books say, if you want to start a habit and you have it, you need to keep it small. Let's, let's have an example. Let's say for, for instance, that I want to take up exercising. Let's say I don't exercise, I want to start exercising. If I tell myself every day, uh, as soon as I come back from work, I'm going to exercise for half an hour. I'm never going to do this. I'm going to do it the first day, the second day, the third day, I'm going to be tired. The fourth day, I'm going to be hungry. It's never going to happen. But what if I tell myself every day, as soon as I wake up, I'm going to do 10 push-ups. I can always do that. It doesn't matter how tired I am and if I'm hungry or if I'm in pain or even if I'm ill, I can still do 10 push-ups. So this is what we want in the beginning. We should not break the habit. So keep it very, very small. Later, you can increase uh, the routine, what you do. So you tell your students in the beginning, I just want you to read one page of your reader, just one page every day. Once the habit is established, they can do more. This is one thing. Here's another thing now. Research has shown that we are more likely to establish a habit if we write down exactly what we intend to do. And these are called implementation intentions. Even if it, the habit is a very, very small thing, like doing 10 push-ups, think. Okay, where are you going to do this? Okay. When? As soon as I wake up. Where? In my bedroom. How? I'm going to do two sets of five push-ups. That's a detailed plan. Notice the plan 
that I um, showed you earlier about uh, for LO or for the vocabulary site, you need to give students steps, step one, step two, step three, step four. So you have to have very, very specific instructions. This is what we need, something like this. Okay, a, a, a little piece of paper where we write down exactly what we're gonna do, when we're gonna do it um, and how. For example, implementation intentions. I will read one page of the reader, Aladdin, and the magic lamp, where uh, as soon as I get into bed at night, okay, every evening, that's it. Implementation intentions help an awful lot. So let's move on to the third strategy now. We have looked at a strategy for practicing listening, hello, and another strategy for uh, expanding your vocabulary, um, learn English, feel good. Now, can we practice speaking? And many people say, uh, well, you cannot practice speaking because you need a partner. Actually, you can. You can use vocaru. What is vocaru? Here's what it looks like. Vocaru is a web tool. It's the simplest tool that exists. There is only one button, only one, this one. You click on the button and you record yourself. So I remember what we said, implementation intentions. Imagine I'm a student, step by step. Step number one, think of a topic and make notes. Okay. I want to make a mini monologue. My topic is my best friend. Michael. So I asked the students to make some notes. Michael, uh, um, job, okay, where he works, what kind of a person he is, what he looks like, etc., etc. Okay, a few things. Monologue. How much time? Twenty seconds. Keep it short. Then you go to Vokaru. You press the button, and you make the monologue. You record yourself. Here's what I tell my students. Try to say, to, to talk about, let's say your friends, Michael. Say anything you want to say. If you can say it in English, say it in English. If you cannot say it in English, say it in Greek. Say it in your mother tongue, in Arabic, in, in Urdu, any language, okay? And then listen to yourself and make a note of it. Did I do well? Was I fluent? Uh, there are gaps. Well, I didn't know how to say this word. I didn't know how to say this phrase. So you look these phrases up and then you do it again. The key here is self-observation. If we want our students to become independent, they have to learn to monitor themselves and monitor their progress. Okay, let's see how this is done. That's very, very easy. Okay, so let's go here. Where are we now? Uh, Vokaru. Here it is. So you click on Vokaru, and this is what you see. One button only. I have prepared my notes here. So let me record myself. Imagine that I'm a student now. I'm just going to record myself for a few seconds. Okay. Well, um, my best friend's name is Michael. Uh, he's an English language teacher and trainer. Uh, he's very good. He's very Fcinidos. Uh, and another thing I like about him is that he's very seen uh, um, He's always on time, etc, etc. Okay, remember, we said 20 seconds. And then I I'm a student, okay, I'm going to listen to myself. Click on the play button. And I will notice that, oh, wait a minute, there are a couple of, ex of words I didn't know. Okay, well, um, my best friend's name is Michael. Uh, he's an English language teacher and trainer. Uh, he's very good. He's very uh, Fcinidos. Okay, Fc that's a Greek word. Fcinidos. Then I look it up. Oh, it's conscientious. He's very conscientious. And another thing I like about him is that he's very... Cinepis. Uh, ah, Cinepis. Uh, then I look it up. Okay, punctual. Um, 
is always on time, etc., etc. And then I do the second time, but this time I know the words, and because I've just said this thing, I'm, I'm more, I'm going to be more fluent. So, so students can see their progress. Fantastic. Notice something else. It's a good idea for students to download these little monologues so they have a record of their progress. Somebody said it earlier. Click on here, save and share. And you can download this little clip. Very good. Okay. How long would such a thing take? Less than five minutes. You prepare your notes. You make a mini monologue, half a minute. You listen to yourself. You look up any words or phrases and you do it again. Okay. Three is the magic number for learning. Keep it in mind. Tell your students. You want to get better. Use the number three. You do it. You get feedback. Here, you give feedback yourself. And then you do it again. That's it. Okay? So this is Vokaru. A great way to improve your speaking skills. Now, one last thing about habits now. We stress the importance of uh, consistency, of sticking with a habit every day until we have established the habit. What happens if we miss a day where something happens and we forget about it and so on? Well, research has shown that it doesn't matter if you miss a day, but it does matter if you miss two days in a row. Watch this little clip. When trying to build a brain habit, research shows that failing to execute one day, it's not a big deal. It simply reduces your odds of adopting the habit by about 5%. But if you fail to execute the habit for two days in a row, you'll reduce the odds of adopting that habit by 55%. Miss more than two days in a row, and you'll reduce your chances of building that habit by 90 plus percent. Therefore, your primary goal when onboarding a habit is to make sure it doesn't miss more than two days of work in a row. So that's very, very important which is why you need to keep reminding students, okay, reminding students so that they stick with a habit. Consistency is hugely important in establishing a habit. Habits are not formed overnight. So what does research show about, about habit formation? Well, there have been lots and lots of studies about um, getting people to form habits and it depends on a number of factors. It depends on the age of the person. It depends on the personality of the person. It depends on the circumstances. And it depends on the nature of the habit, clearly. So establishing a habit, it, 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 the period ranges between 15 days and 250 days. But on average, it takes about 66 days. So if you want to be pretty sure that your students have actually adopted a habit. Uh, you, you can be pretty sure that they've, uh, the habit is established if they've been doing this for two months in a row without missing a day, okay? Once the habit is established, you can go on to increase the routine from one page a day to two pages a day, and gradually three pages a day, okay? And then they will come to enjoy it themselves. This is the key. Do not miss two days in a row. It takes some time, but it is really worth it. Because as somebody uh, said in, in Think Small, it's habit formation is the holy grail of behavioral science. Because then you can do things on autopilot without any effort at all in the same way that you brush your teeth. You, know, you can brush your teeth uh, even when you're half asleep. Can you imagine what it would be like if, if students Practice English as a matter of course. Okay, there are, there are students who have got used to watching the news on BBC, let's say, in English. And it's a, they don't think about it as learning or, or practicing. They just do it automatically. This is what we want. Okay. One last activity now. <clears throat> Q prompter. This is to help you uh, build a reading speed. It's one of my favorite tools to prompt out. Now, this is what it looks like. I'm, I'm going to show you the, the tool in a minute. 
it's important that our students learn to, uh, um, to start reading quickly. I don't know if you've ever prepared, prepared students for the IELDS exam, but the IELDS exam, if you're taking the, this exam, you have to read three huge texts in one hour. Okay, this is not easy. So students have to learn to read fast. So let's see what they can do. I tell the students, okay, find a text online, followed by some questions. Okay. Study the questions first. Always, even in an exam situation, you start with the questions. And it's a good idea to try to predict the answers. Okay. Go to QPrompter. I'm going to show it to you in a minute. And read your text fast. Okay, and then see whether you can answer the questions. Try answering the questions. Okay. Students love this because of the challenge. As you're going to see, they have to read the text fast. If you tell students to read the text, they're going to say, oh, another. But if you tell them, I want you to read the text in 10 seconds, oh, they enjoy the challenge. So let's see how it works. I have the text, but what about the questions? First, let's look at the questions. Okay. The text is this. It's called A Visit to the Dentist. Now, try to guess the answers. Are the following statements true or false? Just guess. The couple went on holiday. It's about a couple, a man and a woman. They were on holiday. True or false? Just guess. The woman wants a feeling. Yeah? Could maybe a problem with the tooth. She needs a feeling. Yes. The woman wants no anesthetic. True or false? Oh. I said perhaps false. I don't know. The woman is very brave. We'll see. Okay? Now, let's look at the text. So you go online, what it says, Q prompter. You, you Google Q prompter, and this is what you see, free teleprompter. This is the box, and this is where you paste your text. But before you paste your text, you press enter 12 times. You'll see why in a minute. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, need somebody? And then you paste your text. You choose the small font size and the yellow background. Start prompter. Here it is. Can you see the text? No, you cannot. The text is at the bottom of the screen. And that's why we pressed enter 12 times. Now, when I press the space bar, the text is going to start coming up. And you'll have to read it fast, otherwise it will disappear at the top. Okay. Are you ready? I'm sure you are. You were born ready. Notice I can adjust the speed. This is like a treadmill. If I'm a, a good student, a good learner, and I can read fast, I can choose speed set number seven, let's say. If I'm weak, I can choose speed number three. The learner can adjust it very good. Let's do it. Let's read the text. It's a very short text. Whoop, I've slowed it down. Okay, isn't it great? We're going to look at to check the answers um, in a minute. So if your students don't get some of the answers, they can click where it says page up and do it again. Notice how you can adjust the speed. You can make it faster or slow it down. 
You can do it with the arrows, so you can use these numbers here. Very good. One of my favorite tools, this one. So let's look at the answers. The couple were on holiday, true or false? It was true, of course. The woman wants a feeling, actually, no. We're talking about having a tooth removed. But it's not her own tooth. The woman wants no anesthetic, that's true. And, well, the woman can afford to be brave because it's not her tooth, like we said, okay. An excellent tool. And, and you tell your students, so your text can be very, very long. And there can be many, many questions. But the student chooses, they, they can find texts with questions online. And they can do one such activity every day. They read the questions. They can read the text twice, perhaps, at a speed where they feel comfortable. And then they, they check the answers. One thing I love about this tool is that it solves one of the problems we have. One of the reasons why our students read slowly is because they get stuck when they don't know a word. Yeah, they stop and they say, uh, Miss or Mr., uh, what does this word mean? Well, they can't do that with QPrompter because the text is going to disappear. And you can use it to challenge students in a class. Let's see who gets the most answers, etc., etc. Very good. Okay. Take away now. Basically, that was it. So we'll, we'll, we'll be finishing soon in about two or three minutes. Let's see what we lo looked at today. Today, we looked at two things. We looked at four strategies. Do you remember the four strategies? For listening, okay, we said L-O, three L's, E-L-L-L-O, okay. For vocabulary, so the second one, learn English, feel good. With vocabulary, which is topic-based, which means whenever they do one of these exercises, all the words go into the same folder in the brain. Number three, speaking, yes, vocaru. Students record themselves, they listen to themselves, and they do it again. And finally, cue prompter for improving reading speed. So we looked at these four strategies, but we also looked at the process of habit formation. Okay, we looked at uh, the importance of the cue, the routine, the reward, the importance of the reward, the importance of linking your habit to a point in your day. And we looked at the importance of consistency. Over to you now. Here's a question for you. Imagine that as you, you uh, close everything, we haven't finished yet in a minute. Yeah. Imagine that when this webinar is over, your husband comes in or a colleague comes in. They ask you, what one thing would you like to remember from today's session? One thing. I want you to... Uh, use this link. Uh, Amanola, can you please share it on chat? If you can please share it on chat. Okay. Yes, I've shared it okay. on chat. This is the link. Okay. So you please click on the link. Click on the link and it will take you to um, it will take you to a wall, I think. Here. So I want you to double click here on this wall and write down one sentence. What would you like to remember from this session? Okay. So somebody had said, okay, oh, I loved Qprompter. I think my students will love the challenge. Double click and write one sentence. I want to remember the listening strategies. Okay. Q prompter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see. Learning is. Uh, I, somebody liked Bokaru. I like it. I like the Bokaru. Yeah. 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 Learn English. Feel good. Sounds good. I'll get my students to. Okay. I want to apply with my students the strategies. A great tool. Which one is the great tool? Somebody said Q prompter. 
Okay. Anything else? Come on, feel free to, to post more. I want to start using hello. Okay, great tool, etc. cetera. I'll this guy. Okay, somebody, we have somebody here who has not completed the message. Feel free to write the bar. Okay, so let's see, people like Bukharu. They seem to like, hello, they like the vocabulary. Okay. What about the habits? They, yeah, like Bukharu. Hello, and the, the habit cycle. Yeah. This is what we want because if you manage to get students to establish habits, they will continue doing it even when you're not there. For me, this is the secret of success. For me, I'm successful as a teacher. If my students come to you to me three years later and they tell me, I keep on studying English. Okay, I, I love English. I keep reading and, and watching things, etc., etc. Okay, so let's go back. We'll be finishing in one minute. Last words. Forming habits, quick, quick recap. Habits. Start small. Very important if you want them to establish a habit. Link your habit to a salient cue during the day. All right. Choose a small reward in the beginning in order to help establish the habit. Okay. And make detailed plans, implementation intentions. It needs education, but it is worth it. Okay. And these strategies, of course, they're new strategies because of the advent of the internet. I don't know if any of you remember the good old days with audiolingualism. Back then there was only one strategy. Here was the strategy, yeah? You had a cassette player and you had a cassette. You, 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 you would put the cassette into the cassette player, you press the button, the play button, you listen, you repeat, you've learned the language. That's what they told us, yeah? Like this guy is trying to do. This guy is trying to learn French. Let's watch this. My brother is in the garden. Mon frère est dans le jardin. Regardez. My brother is in the garden. Where is the bicycle? Où est la bicyclette? Regardez. Where is the bicycle? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm learning French. It's really easy. As long as you ignore what the second woman is saying, I don't know what the hell she's on about. I think she might be a bit mad. Or as they say in France, I think she might be a bit mad. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for being here today. Let me share with you the books that I showed you earlier. If you want, you can take a screenshot. Here they are. Strongly recommended. If you want to learn about habits, they're all excellent. Think small is my favorite. And you want to watch this little video clip. This is an animation, and this is where I took these little videos from. Okay. And if you like the uh, the webinar and you like the presentation, and you would like to tell me how much you liked it and how much you loved it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, so here are some contact details. If you want to send me an email, check. If you like the last clip, if you thought it was funny, you can find it on the Comedy for Realty on YouTube. This is my channel. And this is my blog. Just to find my blog, just type PLT in it. Okay. I would like to thank you all for being here today. And I would like to thank Amanola for inviting me to give this talk. I hope you found it useful. And like I said, I look forward to feedback and comments. If you try out these strategies with your students, please let me know how it went. Thank you, Amanola. Can you hear me? Thank, Thank you. you very much, Nick. It was wonderful, uh, you know, and uh, we very much enjoyed your talk. And uh, thanks for all these resources and wonderful ideas. So much of the appreciation for your session. And uh, somebody asked if these uh, you know, resources are free. You told in a webinar, yes. Yes, they're all free. free. So, great. Okay. So thank you very much. Like I said, okay, if you have any questions, you can send me an email and I'll be happy to, to answer them uh, and so on if you, 
uh, I'm, I'm sure that Amarala, you can share perhaps the slides or anything. But I think this recording will be available for, for people who would like to. That's right. So the webinar is going to be available on the on the on your YouTube channel. Yeah. Teacher development webinars. So yeah, anybody who would like to see um, slides or information yep. can go there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amanula, once again. And I'll be happy to right. see you all again at some point. Okay. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye -bye. Great. Thanks very much for your participation and uh, all of these, you know, uh, wonderful activities and participation. Uh, we very much appreciate this. Uh, this was perhaps a uh, last webinar of this year, and uh, we wish you a safe and well holidays. Merry Christmas was celebrating. And thank you, Marla. At this point, I remind you, you know. COVID-19 have been rising, so please be safe. Stay safe. Take care Stay for safe, your everyone. loved ones, for yourself. Keep wearing masks. Thank you. And don't forget a social solidarity. So this recording will be made available on our teacher development webinars, a YouTube channel this evening. So you can rewatch and feel free to share. You can always join our social media channels. We're available on Twitter. Uh, Twitter handle is TD webinars. You can follow us on Instagram as well. All our previous webinars are available at our Twitter Development Webinars YouTube channel. And our Facebook group has grown to you know, over 15,000 educators around the world. And that's something great and huge. We appreciate your support and participation. Thanks very much. You know, be safe. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye.